They've been on a cross-country odyssey, the anglers of the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. From the southeast to the far west, through the cuts to 100 into 50, this group has hung in there and made it. I made it. I'm here. Made it. Top 50. Two tournaments left to decide a lot of issues, including who's going to be Bush Angler of the Year, who's going to the Bassmasters Classic. A lot on the line today, including the $100,000 first prize. Okay, guys, let's start them up. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is presented by Bush. Well, thanks for joining us for the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. I'm Tommy Sanders, and with the tour on the ninth of our 10 events out here this year. Lots of stories, lots of things coming down to the wire as we head for the Bassmasters Classic. We're on Lake Hamilton in Arkansas on the Ouachita River right here in the central part of the state of Arkansas. On the Tour Lake, people have been bass fishing here for well over 50 years. And of course, we're in the town, the town of Hot Springs National Park. And above the town is where we find Jerry McKinnis. It is a different sort of place, isn't it, Jerry? Tommy, you're right. This is a very special place. The Hot Springs area is kind of a, a, a fisherman's factory as well. Bassmaster Classics come from this area. The, the first ever, Bobby Murray, still lives in Hot Springs. The next was Mark Davis, who's in our field today, and then there was George Cochran. And I think one reason why so many good fishermen come from the surrounding area here is not only is Lake Hamilton available, but Lake Washita is just 10 or 12 miles outside of town, and it's the largest bass fishing uh, of water in the state of Arkansas. Well, Jerry, just the fact that you're up there flying around is a good sign. We should get fishing started today. Will the weather be a factor at any time? Well, I don't think any time we've been here has the weather been a big factor at all. Uh, every morning has been a little bit, a little bit overcast, a little cloudy, just about like this, and not too much wind has been perfect for the topwater bite. These guys are really counting on a little bit of topwater action. The master of that topwater action over the first two days on Lake Hamilton was Tennessee's Jay Kendrick. The lead on days one and two. But how long can he hold off superstars and local boys Ron Sheffield and Mark Davis? Only catch this one first. Kendrick stuck to his guns on day three, a fishing a walking type topwater lure dressed with chicken feathers. We call him At the, the same time, the his pursuers were fine-tuning their patterns and making up ground. Ooh. Here we go right here. Here we go. Especially Mark Davis. He's moved up in this tournament, and he's moved up in the Bush Angler of the Year stats as well. He's in fourth place right now and hanging on. The former Lake Hamilton guide who has mastered both the where and the when of these fish. He caught his limit yesterday in 10 minutes. This veteran here does not miss a trip. <clears throat> The guy that's ahead of me made a comment on stage yesterday, and this is why you don't ever tell anything on stage about putting these little feathers on that treble hook. You see where that one had it, way down there? <clears throat> I didn't have feathers on my treble hook yesterday, and guess what? You don't tell that stuff on stage. Everyone was counting their chickens by day three, but Jake Hendrick scratched out a smaller limit. Gave up the lead going into the final round. Nine pounds, one ounce. Nine one keeps you right there in the number two spot. To no one's surprise, Mark Davis and his 11 pound plus stringer put the Hot Springs native in the pole position. The tournament headed into the final day. 11 11. Timing is the key. These fish bite for a while each day for a very short period of time. And then that's over. If you, if you miss that little small wind of opportunity, you don't catch them. Six anglers left to shoot at this important tour event, each one with a different story. Guys like Randy Howell and Joe Thomas, hard chargers, still looking for their first tour win. Kenyon Hill, he's won on tour, but it's been five years. And how about all-time top 10 money winner Ron Shuffield? He's ready for another win as well. The rookie Jay Kendrick on track for his best finish ever. And one of the sport's biggest names ever with a small lead and the questionable home water advantage. 
All right, well, the magic moment is here. Takeoff for the finals, the last day of this big tournament on Lake Hamilton. Ron Shuffield, who lives just 15 miles down the road in Bismarck, Arkansas. Ron, what's the game plan for today? Well, you know, my game plan today is to go out and fish just like I fished the rest of the week and, and try to uh, get lucky and get the big bite. You said yesterday, Ron, that the fish are doing something different each and every day. What's happening with these fish right now, and what are they going to be doing today? Well, these, they, these fish are just coming off a pre-spawn pattern, or off a post-spawn. I mean, that's basically they're kind of sick, very inactive, just kind of cruising around and swimming. And I noticed a lot of fish swimming around the banks in real shallow water during the, uh, the two practice rounds before qualifying. And the way that normally works is it takes those fish somewhere in the three to seven day range before they'll start getting active and biting topwater baits, uh, crank baits, different things. But it's usually always a topwater bait is the bite first. And so I knew that coming in and I was aware that that would probably be the thing that would happen. And uh, so I pretty much evolved my entire pattern around the topwater bait, uh, letting it get better each and every day of the competition. And that's what's happening. It's getting better, especially with the weather and the cloud cover and the conditions we've got. It should just continue to get better throughout. Uh, probably for the next two weeks, and then the fish will settle in more towards your summertime patterns. All right, thank you, and good luck to you. Thank you. Ron Sheffield underway. We're all underway here and ready to go. We're very lucky. We've got a great special guest today, three-time Angler of the Year, 2001 Bassmasters Classic champ Kevin Van Dam. And Kevin, I guess you and the other 49 anglers may have come to Lake Hamilton expecting one thing, but it turned out to be a little bit different, didn't it? Well, it was. You know, I mean, there was a great topwater bite going on, and there always is in the post-spawn period of the year, but to be in the right area where those big ones are at, you know, you had to, you really had to know a little bit more about the lake. That was the key to success. Were you under the chicken feather thing? Oh, for sure. You know, if you're throwing top water, you better have a chicken feather on the back. You know, it, it, it just has a lot better uh, action. That, that feather kind of collapses and it breathes in the water. It makes it look very, you know, much like a shad. And that's what the bass were, were keying on. Right. So We're going to talk about that a little bit later. A lot of other things, including the upcoming Bass Masters Classic. We'll see if the chicken feather thing continues to hold out for these guys. Also, if Mark Davis can hang on and win his first tour event when we return. Don't go away. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Sitco. By Bush and by Skeeter. Welcome back to Lake Hamilton Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. We'll continue with our Sitco Bassmaster Tour final round action in a moment. Right now, look at this man right here, Alton Jones of Waco, Texas. He's in an important position because he's our Bush Angler of the Year points leader. And Jerry, along with winning the Classic, Angler of the Year is the most important thing you can do all year. Well, it represents consistency, and Alton Jones may be Mr. Consistent right now. Look at him perched there on top. But hey, this list has changed so much throughout the season, and it's still a race between five great Great anglers. Yeah, Alton Jones with the slim one-point lead over Jay Yellis, who really had a good finish down at Toledo Bend. He's been super consistent ever since then. Roger Bowler, our Cinderella story this year, really got his wheel rolling down at Okeechobee. A great race. And look at Mark Davis, three-time Angler of the Year winner already, has moved past Shaw Grigsby at this point. If he can hang on today, he will finish in that fourth position. So a terrific race going on. Now as we get back out onto the water, final day action on Lake Hamilton. Not the biggest lake we've been on all year, but certainly big enough for our six boats today. And the Washita River is the main water source, and Ron Sheffield and Jake Kendrick have started inside of the takeoff there at Carpenter Dam. Kenyon Hill is up the Little Mazarn Creek. Randy Howe is on the main lake near Anderson Point. Joe Thomas and Mark Davis are in the Washita River. Mark's probably about six miles from the takeoff spot, and Jake Kendrick and Joe Thomas is probably two miles below Dave. First morning of the tournament, I caught five right here on the four, five right here on this point right here. And they're missing my bait today. One, he's got it. He's got it. That's a good one, too. I don't know if he's foul hooked or if it's that big a fish. I'll take it easy. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. He's pulling. It's a nice one. He's just foul hooked it. Oh, it's a white. Dag, darn it. That's what's up there, some darn whites. Was well, that disappointing or what? Dag, gun it. Boy, Joe Thomas real upset with a white bass, but all these fish are chasing bait fish right now. White bass, stripers, black bass, spotted bass. But the blacks and the spotted bass are what we're after. Spotted bass. 
There's actually two groups of fish out here. There's a group of largemouth and a group of these spotted Kentucky bass. And the largemouth are the ones we want. But right now, we'll take what we can get. A lot of guys are taking these Sammies like I'm throwing here, these Lucky Craft Sammies, and they're modifying them with chicken feathers. And I did the same thing. I don't know if it makes a difference, but... Going to be keeping score for you all day long right there in the lower left. The leader always represented in his number of pounds, and everyone who's pursuing the leader is represented by the number of pounds that they are behind. Oh, shoot. That's a big black. Oh, a big black. Now, this is why you keep throwing into those places where the white bass are. You just never know. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. That's how we start the morning. Oh, Mr. Sammy. Yes, sir. Yeah, baby. I don't get excited. I, dog. That's worth three of them little spotted dogs. Yes, sir. Sitting down on that Over to Jay Kendrick. Guys like Jay, you see him at every tournament. Somebody finds here. a little twist that separates him from the rest of the crowd. But we had to know more. We just had to know more about the chicken feathers, so we sicked fish fish burn on him. We're talking chicken feathers here, and you're actually putting chicken feathers on the back as a trailer. Tell me about it. I am fish. I've actually brought three baits uh, that I've been using during this tournament. Uh, the addition of the chicken feathers on the back just seemed to be uh, a natural trigger for these fish. Uh, in, in practice, I had fish follow this bait to the boat. They wouldn't commit to it. They wouldn't take it. They were slapping at it. I added the chicken feathers to the back. This is a Sammy. That's a Sammy, that's a Sammy 100. Do you it? tie these chicken feathers on here yourself? I do tie these chicken feathers on. These right here were store bought. I ran out of the ones that I tie myself. Chicken feathers! This bait, and actually all three of these baits, fish, are closely mimic the size of the, of, the, of the shad in this lake. Why did you tell me? Why did you reveal it? There's a, there's a 50 guys fishing this competition. Why? Well, I didn't figure many guys carried around chicken feathers in their back pocket to, uh, to use at these tournaments. So I thought that it was a pretty safe giveaway. Tommy, I love Jay's attitude, and I think that secrets among the anglers should be a, a thing of the past. Jay, Jay's There's helping me right out there. with my case, That's too. That's the one we're looking for. Please stay hooked up, baby. Come on, baby, please stay hooked up. Please stay hooked up, baby. I think maybe he wants the fish to stay Please hooked up stay here. Hooked up. I think he's worried. About Please stay that. hooked up. Hey, they all are a little yes. paranoid, but that's topwater yeah. fishing, yeah. man. If you're going to fish a topwater bait all day that's long, you're going to have a lot of fish jump off. Little stretches where it feels like you never will catch one again. But yes. look at how long their casts are. And when you make a long cast like that, that's you have a, a lot of line three. laying on the water, and a fish. Thank smashes you, that top water bait thank and it's you, very you. difficult to set the hook thank with that you, much line. <laughs> but I tell you what, Tommy, they do like fishing the top water bait because look at the water you can cover with it. Jake Hendricks gotta love it. Look at him, he just took the lead. Now you know what's cool? I can throw it right back out there. And there may be another one that'll do the same thing. When the fish are, the, are active, you can uh, you can get multiple strikes on one cast. I think that's what makes topwater fishing so much fun. There's the view from below. It does look good. And when we return, Kevin Van Dam's going to show you how the pros walk the dog. We'll also check in with Ron Shuffield when we return. All right, man, congratulations. Uh, I'm going to have to go get a chicken myself. <laughs> how many chickens do you currently own in the coop at your home? <laughs> I don't have any chickens fished. <laughs> you want to do an imitation of a chicken call? <laughs> no, no. Maybe tomorrow or the next day? Maybe, maybe, maybe tomorrow. All right, look forward to seeing Jay Kinder. <laughs> Chicken Feather Man. I need a four pounder. Come on, big fish, eat that thing, wherever you're at. That's Ron Shuffield trying to help his cause there. One of our six finalists on this final day of competition at Lake Hamilton on the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. And Kevin Van Dam made a very simple statement a little earlier. He said, you know what, Jerry? These events are hard to win. And boy, I, I agree with him. Ron, 
has won six times. That's pretty impressive. It really is impressive. Also, the fact that for every three tournaments Ron Shuffield has entered, he has finished in the money in two of them. That is a big figure right there. Sometimes it takes more than one in an area to get one convinced. That fish didn't hit that bait very good. Saw how sluggish it was. She just kind of sucked it down from the back end. Haven't even seen Randy Hal yet, but I guarantee his old rod is bouncing. Haven't watched Kenyon Hill either. You know, I know what everybody is fishing with, though. They're throwing Zara Spooks, our Sammies, and these are both topwater baits that when, when given the right rod action, are gonna jump back and forth real erratic on top. And I'm betting Tommy and Kevin can add a little bit to that. I don't know, maybe our music so far should be walking the dog. That's what we're seeing the most of today, a topwater tournament, which is a lot of fun to watch. And walking the dog is a technique. And for everyone, Kevin, who doesn't know that, explain how it works. Well, with a bait like this, Sammy, uh, you know, to get it to get that good side to side action, first off, you got to tie a split ring or a snap to the front. Okay. And, uh, you know, that gives it that loose connection. And when you pop your rod tip down, you want to kind of point it back at it and throw the lure a little slack. And that's what gives it that good side to side action. And then when you have the chicken feather on the back, it's kind of swishing and breathing. And it makes it look just like an injured bait fish or a wounded shad up there on the top. Makes it look like the tail of that. Now, the slack is very, very important. You can take one out and just jerk it all you want, but if, unless you throw it the slack, it's not going to go back and that, forth. That's right? exactly right. You can see it here. I mean, that action going back and forth, it stays in the strike zone a long time. It has a lot of movement. The, the feather there is breathing real well. It looks just like a bait fish up there. All right, and an injured bait fish is the, the action we're trying to get a distressed fish that's it's kind of having trouble on top of the water. Easy meal for the bass. Mark Davis walking the dog right there. And like you said, it doesn't matter if the rod tip's up or the rod tip's down. It really works both ways. Yeah, you know, if you keep the rod tip up, you can get that faster movement out of it, livelier. And when they're schooling, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, let's take a little ride. If I can get them feathers coming, I'll just come right on and hit the boat. Another fat Kentucky. Look at the belly on that fat little Kentucky. Now, he's not a big, look at that, barely had him hooked. Look at that. Look how fat. He might be kin to Mark Davis with a belly like that, huh? Well, there you go, Mark Davis with his second fish of the day. And a lot of people, Kevin Van Dam, would say Mark's at a disadvantage today. A, because he started with the lead. People think that may be a jinx. Two, because he's on his home water. A lot of guys on their home water have too much history. They know too many places to fish. And sometimes that makes it hard to win a tournament. Well, you know, if the bite was wide open and, and everybody was catching him, that can be true. But when it's real tough, I'll take that local advantage any day. You know, he, Mark knows a lot of spots. He knows the history of the lake. I like his chances. All right, we're going to stay with Mark Davis. You can bet on on that. Also, right now, Jerry McKinnis up in the air has located Randy Howell and has some questions for him, I'm sure. Randy, these, these fish are in kind of a, a strange stage right now. Kind of explain that. They're not really spawning anymore, but uh, they're kind of hard to figure out. Yeah, Jerry, this is probably the toughest time of the year to fish, uh, especially on a small reservoir like this. They're in that uh, post-spawn stage where they're moving out. Some fish on the lower lake are trying to get out and suspend to school up. Fish on the upper lake are just cruising in the pockets, garden fry, and some of them are just kind of laying under shade trees, waiting to get their strength back to move out to deeper water. So I've kind of been mixing up my bag of tricks every day just to try to come in with five, and I've been working for 10 pounds every day, and I still haven't had a big stringer, but I'm hoping today maybe that'll happen. Well, I guess, you know, most, most every, any time you fish here, you're uh, concentrating on bait fish, but maybe this time of the year the bait fish are even more important for finding fish. Yeah, for finding those active fish, Jerry, is real important, I think, especially on this lake. Hamilton's a real, uh, a real strange lake. It's full of fish, and but a lot of fish suspend on this lake, and they suspend and school out over points in deeper water, and that's what I'm trying to do this morning is get some of those bigger fish that are suspended after those shad that come up on the top water bay. You know, we're happy to have Kevin Van Dam with us today, and later he is going to talk with us about Randy Howell's suspended fish theory. But right now, Joe Thomas, he's been keeping things moving right along all morning, and now he's trying to make a major a move. Oh, gee. Oh, come on, stay, baby. He's... Stay by the baby. Yeah, baby. That's number two. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, baby. Thank you, Lord. It's gold in this tournament, man. It's gold. Ain't no color and clips going in them bad boys. Do it, Sammy. Do it. Do it. Do it. 
Joe Thomas is doing it. Take a look at him moving now, moving all the way up to third place, a pound and a half behind our leader, Kendrick, at this point. And like Jerry said, everyone's rod is doing the same uh, thing. We have got a top water tournament on. Oh, come on, baby. Come on. There we go. Thank you, Lord. See him followed up there and eat it. Slow motion. Oh, that was awesome. Most of the time when they do that, they don't eat it, man. He just come up in slow motion to eat it. <laughs> That's a decent little keeper, not a big one, but I'm glad to have him. Wow, that was awesome. I looked down, I could see him. I was walking it side to side, I could see him following. I've got that red bleeding bait Daichi hook on there, and that really triggers him. Every time you twitch it, that hook will flash. And I watched him come up under it, and he'd he come up right behind it, then he turned on the side like that. When I twitched it one more time, he bit it right there and grabbed it right on that red hook. And that's where I had him hooked at. Randy Howell, you know, we've been talking about the chicken feathers today, but he just showed us something that probably right now is getting more play than the chicken feathers in the press and so forth, and that's the red hook. Are those for real? You know, I think so. When you've got a real clear water situation, you know, out here, the water you can see down about six feet. Those fish can see that hook, and I've, I've experimented with it, and I, I believe in it. You use them? I use them. All right, we'll see who else is using them a little bit later. When we return, Kendrick is now taking the lead by half a pound over Mark Davis. We'll see how that race shapes up. We'll look at those two fishermen when we get back. It's a Sitgo Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Welcome back to Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Lake Hamilton in the ninth of our 10 tour events this year. Lake Hamilton has started out to be a small fish tournament, but look at this one. Seven pounds, nine ounces from Peter Filberos on day number two. Today, the final day, our Super Six are out there battling it out. Jake Kendrick of Tennessee held the lead for the first two days of this tournament. One of the hometown favorites, Mark Davis, took over the lead on day number three. And so far, on this final day, day four, those two have been battling it out with about a half a pound of each other all day long. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Kevin Van Dam, and here's another hometown favorite, Ron Shuffield, and I know you think a lot of him, Kevin. Oh, he's a great fisherman, and, uh, you know, watch out with a jig in his hand, but look, he's got a spook here, and, uh, you know, he is great with a spook, too. You can see he's, he's throwing around some jugs right there, and I'm sure there's some brush there. You know, during the post-spawn, bass love to suspend underneath cover, you know, above brush piles or underneath docks and things, and that's a quality fish right there. That's what it takes to win is fish like that. Another one of the keys you mentioned earlier in our show, you, those fish are everywhere, but finding the ones you can catch and the good big ones, that's a big part of the puzzle you have to solve here. It, it really is. You know, you got to fish the conditions, and you got to be in the area where the quality oh, fish are at. So again, I guess we have to offer a, a favorite position to guys like Ron Shuffield and Mark Davis, guys who've spent some time on this lake. They know the Water. We're going to take you back to Clear Lake right now, our last tournament, Clear Lake, California. Visit with a guy who showed us a lot of potential there. In fact, a guy who may have a lot in common with Babe Ruth in that he can call his shots. Ish Monroe there with Jerry McKenna. <laughs> that is right, Tommy. And I'm, I'm uh, sure you realize what he's referring to. That uh, you, you did. You had a great tournament out there, yeah, Clear Lake. It was definitely a good one. Uh, and not so good here, Ish. Yeah, it was a little tough. Um, I kind of fish scared. It was one of those deals where, you know, I'm so excited about making the classic. I don't want to do anything to mess it up. And sometimes you can take gambles and mess up your opportunity of actually catching a fish. So what I did is I fished real conservative. Defensively uh, almost. Very defensively. Well, do you wish you had to do over again? Oh, uh, yeah, actually I do. <laughs> you know, fishing was a lot better on this lake than I really expected. Um, I fished the All-American here two years ago and had about the same success where, you know, I caught them a small limit the first day. And oh. Only caught a couple the second day, board. but you know, that's the way I practiced. Ish Monroe, who did such a great job up at Clear Lake, and Kevin Van Dam, before we get back to Lake Hamilton, I want you to talk about suspended fish. That's a term we're using a lot today. What is a suspended fish and what does it react to? Well, these guys are catching a lot of them that are suspended right now. And what the bass are actually doing is remember, they just spawned, they're moving out, they're wanting to, to eat a lot of shad to kind of recoup from spawning. So they just kind of hang out in open water, maybe off these longer points and things, over brush and near structure, but not necessarily relating to anything. And they're looking for schools of bait fish coming by. And that's what these guys are doing with these stick baits. You know, they're casting them out there off these long points, working them on the top and making it look like, you know, an injured bait fish up there. And these bass just come up and just hammer them. Are these individual fish? Or are they kind of in pods and groups together? Well, you know, it's both. Uh, there'll be individuals, but there's a lot of schooling going on. You know, there's a lot of other fish schooling out there suspended too. There's a lot of hybrids and white bass stripers. And the bass will be mixed right with them. So you never know what you're going to catch on any given cast. You get that cast right on top of a bunch of large mouths. Which, which one of them is most likely to come up and get that lure? Is it the big one or the little one in the group? Well, I've always found if it's, if it's a tournament, the little one gets it first. But, you know, in practice, the big one. The big is. one always gets it first. All right. 
Let's take a look at our leaderboard, our new leaderboard, Ron Sheffield, 40 pounds and eight ounces has taken over the top position, two and a half pounds ahead of Mark Davis and Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas has made a run this morning. He's having a great day so far and he has moved up the board. Out to Mark Davis from just up the road in Mount Ida, Arkansas, three time Bush Angler of the Year winner and currently really in that Bush Angler of the Year race here in 2003. He's in fourth place right now as we stand. And it's good hearing a few words from Ish Monroe. And, uh, That's good. Those suspended fish are hard to figure out, and it's a, it was great having Kevin Van Dam explain that to us a little bit. Everybody getting in the act today, Tommy. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you're right. Uh, uh, Mark Davis is out there competing in this tournament and also right in the middle of that Bush Angler of the Year race. I have an idea he's really Ooh. focused on the tournament. He's going to let the Angler year of the Year race kind of take care of itself. Well, there's a lot of pressure on him in this tournament. Mark Davis being the hometown oh, favorite, and of course, everyone's odds on favorite right to win here. this event right here. Over to Jay Kendrick, who was not a favorite coming into this tournament, but has really surprised everyone, and he's off his topwater now. He is off his topwater. He's good one. checked his feathers, and he's throwing a Carolina rig at this point. Ron Sheffield's probably already got five friends in the boat. That's a dang spot. But it's a fat rascal. We'll take him. He'll definitely take him, and he'll move a pound closer to our new leader now, who is Mark Davis. And it doesn't surprise me that that topwater action has slowed down a little bit on up in the day like this. But uh, hey, we've got some really nasty weather coming, so the topwater bait could pick back up. Randy Howell has just not been around the big, big fish today. He's been around fish. He's caught fish all day long. He's had that problem the whole he tournament. The he uh, referred to life. it a little earlier when we talked to him. He just hasn't been able to catch a big right. fish. He has certainly been bouncing around amongst four or five oh, yeah. different lures right now. He's throwing Got a him. small fluke, which is a almost a plastic I version of a Zara spook either. that sinks a little bit, and you kind of walk <laughs> it back to the boat. I won one, I won one uh, battle today anyway. He is kind of pitiful, not very big. Look at the black on him. Pretty. He's a black bass. <laughs> Got him. Oh, it's a good one. It's a big one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lord, please. Please let him stay on, Lord. It's a giant. Oh. Tommy, Joe's asking for help from everyone. And <laughs> Joe is the guy who's making things exciting today. What a run this guy is putting on. He's going after the leaders. He feels it, man. You know, he said earlier that he dreams about this day, right a win in one of these tournaments. And boy, he's, he's looking close now. Back over to Randy Hal, and he's changed lures again, right, Jerry? You know what he's doing right now? He's throwing a front runner. And like a front a runner one. is... It's like a topwater bait with a little leader, maybe 20 inches long behind it, with another lure on there. You can catch two fish at a time, and it is perfectly legal. I do got two. Look. Woo! <laughs> That's awesome. One is not a keeper, and one is. I'll get the keeper off first. Randy Howell needs to that keep catching them two at a time. He needs to catch bigger fish, though, Smallest if he's going to hang in there and fish. challenge the leaders. Who's doing the best job of that right now? Joe Thomas. Can he hang in there with the hometown favorites, Mark Davis and Ron Sheffield? We will find out when we come back. Also, more expert analysis from the 2001 Bassmasters Classic champ, Kevin Van Dam. You're watching the Sitco Bassmaster Tour. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> two three-pounders at the same time is what I want. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, by Mercury, and by Diamond Cut Jeans. One more bite like that, brother? Well, JT might win his first one. That's right. You lay in bed and dream about the day that you win one, it goes just about like this. Better get busy, Mark. Well, Mark Davis has been busy all morning long, bouncing in and out of the lead. He started with the lead today, this final day. The Sitco Bassmaster Tour event from Lake Hamilton, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, and Tommy Sanders, along with Jerry McInnes and Kevin Van Dam. And what a race we have going on on this lake today. And several of our top six have left their topwater patterns, and Joe Thomas has joined that group. Joe's now throwing a jerk bait around the boat docks. 
Yeah, baby, that's five. A five fish Ain't limit, it. and for the that's first five. time this week, Eight the lead seven. for Joe Thomas. I've been able to get like one or two, two and a half, three pounders a day doing this. You just got to do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you do it, and you're hung up, and you hang on ropes, and you, you know, and all that, and then all of a sudden you, you get one. And a lot of times you see them come out on it, and you just got to kind of tease them into biting it. The bigger ones you almost always see first. You kind of slow it down and twitch it light, you know, like break your cadence a little bit, and then they munch it. But for everyone that munches it, there's like four that don't. All right, Joe Thomas feeling it. Who wouldn't be excited? The prospect of winning their first tour event. It's been a great year for Joe Thomas so far. Currently 38th in the Bush Angler of the Year statistics. And what a race we have going on there. Right up at the top, Alton Jones, first place, but just a point ahead of second place, Jay Ellis. A lot of other good guys in the race for that one as well. Now, 40 is the magic number. We are taking 40 anglers to the Bassmasters Classic. One guy who's just on the bubble, just two points below that, is Takahiro Mori and Takahiro, how is that situation going to affect how you fish the Alabama River? Well, I mean, I, I think point-wise, I still have to have a good tournament. That's true. So, so I got fish to the top ten. Right, Takahiro, you say mistakes have really cost you this year. You've made some mistakes. Clear Lake comes to mind. A little late getting back for a weigh-in that cost you big time. Yes, I had a four minutes late. I just forgot about time. I never done before, and uh, that cost me about I don't know, 15, 20 points, uh, but. Uh, if you got nine tournaments, like ten tournaments, you're gonna have a good tournament. You're gonna have a bad tournament. But I, I made all kinds of mistakes this year, but I still have a chance. So I'm gonna try to do my best. All right, Takahiro, thank you for your time. Good luck to you, Takahiro Mori, who has his work cut out for him down on the Alabama River to make it into the Bassmasters Classic. This guy, Kevin Van Dam, is in. You are ready to go for the Classic, and everybody's looking at you to be the man again this time down in Louisiana. Well, last time it was a great experience, but, you know, I, I really had conditions in my favor. With that hurricane coming in, it kept the weights down, but I wouldn't do anything to get to make that leap on stage again. Oh, absolutely. That had to be the peak moment of your career. Oh, it, it was the moment that I'll remember forever. You say things are going to be a little bit different this time still gonna catch fish down uh, there it's it's gonna be awesome this time it's a great fishery great habitat I can't wait to get back down I there. bet you can't I can't wait to get back out to Lake Hamilton right now where we have got a race supreme going on right here check out Mark Davis that one is gonna help his cause and move Mark Davis up to 43 pounds all right over to Joe Thomas Joe Thomas has surged up from down in the ranks today what a year he's had and what a day he is having working that jerk bait there yeah he's calling you know he's throwing that lucky craft pointer and uh, he's got a good fish here. You know, he's just fishing fast, working those docks and uh, covering a lot of water. That's Joe's style. I don't think so. And well, that is a nice fish there. That one ought to catch him up to Mark Davis. Those two guys right now knotted at 43 so, pounds apiece. It's a horse race. <laughs> Lake Hamilton, the fish are not as big as some of the places we have seen this year, but I tell you what, when you got all these guys working at the same time, it really helps out. Jay Kendrick, though, a guy who has a serious day job. He's a nurse anesthetist. I kind of over-prepare. And again, I mean, I hate to keep bringing up my anesthesia background, but it goes back to that. When you're in the operating room, you can't afford not to be prepared because not, it's not $100,000. It's somebody's life you're dealing with. But that has carried over into my fishing so that when I go fishing, I'm usually over-prepared. All right, from Jay Kendrick, we go to Alabama's Randy Howell and Kevin Van Dam. Randy kind of reminds me of you. He's lean, he's mean, very aggressive guy, likes to fish fast, a little bit impatient even sometimes, but yeah. most of all, he hates to lose. Well, that's the way you have to be. You know, Randy, he is real aggressive. He does like to be a power fisherman, and that's what I like about him. You know, he's real competitive, and, and you have to hate to lose. <laughs> well, Kevin, another similarity that comes to mind. Randy, like you, travels with his family. I know yours provides you a lot of support. Randy gets a lot of support as well from wife Robin and son Layton. Me and Robin have traveled together for, this is 11 years now. Uh, we've been on the tour since we were 19. We got married when we were 18. She's been my best friend and best fishing partner and supporter throughout my whole career. And we have one little boy named Laker. He's a joy to be with. <laughs> Without a good wife or good partner in this business, man, it's got to be hard. The guys that travel by themselves, they, I rip my hats off to them because I couldn't do it. She takes care of me, and we have a great time. <laughs> Quickly back over to Ron Shuffield, who has not made any big noise today, but, boy, he has been super solid. And, Kevin, if he can put this one in the boat, this is going to be his limit fish, his fifth. Yeah, I mean, if this is a good keeper, he's going to be less than a pound from the other leaders. I mean, this is tight. I mean, really tight. What a great race. This is the kind you look for, and it should be noted, Ron Shuffield has not really been out of sight of the launch ramp all day long. If he's burned 10 ounces of gas, I would be very, very surprised. 
That one's going to keep. That is going to do it. So Ron Shuffield within a pound of the leaders. Mark Davis with 43. Joe Thomas with 43. And Shuffield barely a pound behind. We will be back. Man, oh, man, if you could just paint him up to look like a largemouth, Randy Howell would be in business. Go get the bass and bring him back. Bass, not quite hybrids. God, what a bite, man. My heart, I thought I'd been... Oh, that was my miracle happening right there. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> back to Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, Lake Hamilton, our Sitgo Bassmaster Tour event. Two men tied for the lead. This man, Mark Davis and Joe Thomas. And Mark Davis, the native of Hot Springs, currently fourth in our Bush Angler of the Year points race. A guy with a lot of memories from this lake, including an early tournament experience with his friend, Alan Ranson. Well, Alan's the one that introduced me to tournament fishing. He was 16, I was 13, and we were the skinny and the fat kid. And uh, he was a tall bean pole, skinny boy, and I was a, I was a short, not short, but I was a big, heavy set guy. We made quite a pair. Uh, and I, I can remember a lot of those older fishermen, ah, them kids, there's no way them kids ca ca caught them fish. They're bound to be cheating. But uh, we weren't cheating, and we won, uh, we won a couple of tournaments that first summer that we fished together. And then we fished together until Alan went off to college. And he went to the University of Arkansas and became a, an accountant. And he claims that I went to the University of Lake Washita and became a professional bass fisherman. Mark Davis remembering one of his old fishing buddies who's now with the lure company that's Mark Davis's sponsor, Strike King. And now here's another graduate of that same school system, if you will, successful graduate, Ron Shuffield. And did you know that Ron was going to quit at the at the beginning of the year, then decided he would not fish next yes, year if he didn't one. do very well this year? But boy, Tommy, things are falling in place for him. Uh, he may have a, a whole new look on life. Well, he'd lost his enthusiasm, but now I think he's got okay. it back. And you'll notice Ron and Joe Thomas both here not wasting any time. They don't even take off their life jackets when they start fishing now. And Joe is another interesting fisherman. Cool. Been at it for so many years, and he is finally yeah, knocking on the door right here. I got here. the bigger of the two. Now over to Jay Kendrick, led the first two days of this tournament for some of the time. Today he was in the lead as well, but ever since, he has been sliding slowly down our leaderboard, so he needs to ignite things right here. Boy, check out that leaderboard. It is tight. That's Jay has I'm just put a about. fish in the boat on a Carolina rig. He may have give up on the chicken feathers. He just needs some fish in the boat right now. Thank you, Lord. Jay, one of our outstanding rookies this year, and today he's headed for his biggest payday ever. I've wanted to fish professionally my whole life. My earliest childhood memories are from when I was fishing with my father. I feel real confident. This is my rookie season. I've had a great year, and uh, you haven't seen me in the top 12 this year because I fish conservatively. I fish to make the Bassmasters Classic. This year was my goal, which I've, I've done. I'm in 21st place right now, but uh, I told my wife when we got here to Lake Hamilton, I said, if I win it, it'll be gravy, uh, but my goal is to make the Bassmasters Classic. Joe Thomas in the lead, but only by half a pound. No one can breathe easy yet. There's still a lot of fishing left to go, although time is running out. It's just so tight. And I have to bring out here that uh, we have not seen Kenyon Hill. That's kind of unfortunate. He's a great, oh boy, that yes. fish will help yes. a lot. But uh, Kenyon is a great angler. And, and he just had a nightmare of a day. And we, and we just haven't seen him, Tommy. That's too bad. Well, that one did help Ron Shuffield. He's now taking the lead. Oh, three pounder and we win this thing. One, three, more three pounder. There he is. That one ain't little. That's a good one, y'all. Yes, sir. We're going to call, y'all. This is a good one. Might there be too little, too late for Randy Howell. He really needs to catch two three pounders at this point. He needs the front runner the back front on there. Runner to needs kick to be in. back out there. there. He's so a little fluke right now, doing yeah, a terrible job Lord. of landing his fish. Finally in the boat. Oh, did put him in the boat. I'm not real sure Barely if there's hurt. enough time for Randy oh. now. We man, we're down to the last the 45 fruit. minutes of fishing, <laughs> and call. I'm sitting here wondering: Is is That's Joe nice Thomas one. finally going to win one? Tommy is is. Mark Davis, we're seeing him right now keep Maybe. pace. Uh, uh, boy, big, it is deep. tight. Will Ron Shuffield break his long drought, a four-year drought for Ron Shuffield since the Mega Bucks tournament back in 1999? And Ron is, boy, he's been around <laughs> fish all day, I'll tell you. That one right there. Did you see that? Golly, bum, a three-pounder. Just what I'm needing. 
that could have been the tournament right here. That that fish was doing what a lot of fish have been doing all day. And Ooh, that's is that frustrating? Play with the anglers. Just kind of tease them. Is that frustrating? That was the winning fish right there, I believe. Look at it laying there on top of the water. No. No, that was the biggest one in the bunch was the one that came up and kissed, kissed it with it right on the end of my rod tip, basically. That was the biggest one in the group. And it was a solid three, or better. Had my chance right yonder to win this tournament on that one duck boat dock right there. One dock that they wouldn't come up and buy it, eat it. Well, did Ron Shuffield lose the tournament right there? Remember, our scores are unofficial, our best guesses, but three guys as close as a half a pound to each other. We're going to solve this nail biter when we return. Don't go away. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Yamaha, by Sitco, and by Bush. All right, the fishing time is over. We are ready for our weigh-in. Three guys unofficially tied for the lead. Two of them basically live in the neighborhood, so all the elements are there on Lake Hamilton. Fish, Fishburn, let's weigh them in. Randy Howell caught that really nice one at the end of the day, but too little, too far back. He finishes in fifth place. Six ounces, nine, six. Please welcome Kenyon Hill. Kenyon Hill had a lot of momentum coming into the day, but his fish just seemed to have disappeared in the finals. It did not happen. Kenyon Hill has not caught a bass on ground four. Please welcome from Milford, Ohio, Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas has been at this game for a long, long time, has never won a tour event, but this year has been a turning point, a top six finish already in the California Delta. Would this be his tournament? A great effort today, 13 pounds, one ounce. We'll sit on that one with three more anglers left to weigh in. 13 pounds and one ounce, 13, one. Bring me the guy from where? Bismarck, Arkansas, Ron Shuffield. Ron Shuffield up next for a long, long time. He's been one of Bass Fishing's heavyweights. Thought he'd let this one get away, but he gets ahead of Joe Thomas with 12, 12 pounds and two ounces. Two ounces, 12. Good heavens, man. Uh, pretty, pretty speechless. <laughs> I bet you are. Two men left. Ladies and gentlemen, this kid had the lead the first two rounds of competition, and you saw Mark Davis steal it from him yesterday. One pound separated Mark Davis and this young man, Jay Kendrick. Big round Jay Kendrick ball. showed us how it's done for the first two days and briefly held the lead here today. But in the end, nine pounds, two ounces, not enough. Even Mark at nine pounds. Thank you, Fish. You are still holding on to the lead. We have one boat left. He's from Arkansas, too. Yeah, he's a real good friend of mine, Mark Davis. And you know, if you get beat by Mark Davis, there's nothing to be worried about there. I mean, that's a, he's a great fisherman and uh, highly deserving of a win. I mean, after all, he probably, he, he, needs, he needs, you know, to win a tournament. He's on, he's the only one he's ever won is a classic, but he's been angled the year three times, and I don't think anybody has ever done that and not won a regular season event. So that tells you the consistency of Mark Davis. The guy never, rarely ever finishes out of the top ten. Let's do it. Send him in right now. Mount Knight, Arkansas, Mark Davis! So his friend and rival for so many years is the only one left between Ron Sheffield and his first tournament win since 1999. Looking for 10 pounds and 4 ounces weight. Jesus, yes. You got it. You got the championship, $100,000. Hey, it's great, man. There you go, the champion trophy. We'll call it a rejuvenation, a comeback for Ron Shuffield. Call it what you want. It was a rock-solid performance. He's your champion on Lake Hamilton today. Right now, let's take a quick look at our Bush Angler of the Year leaderboard. What a race. Alton Jones, the one-point lead over Jay Ellis. But you can bet Roger Bowler, Mark Davis, Shaw Grigsby, they'll all have something to say about that as the series goes on. A Rookie Angler of the Year race is all about Mark Kyle, a runaway for the guy from Arizona. 50 people left in the series. We're only taking 40 to the Classic. Let's take a look at the bubble guys right now. Matt Reed, 
Jimmy Mize, Takahiro Amori, the guys who are really going to be grinding it out next time on the Alabama River and Kevin Van Dam. I know you never fished the Alabama River before, but you'd think it has a lot in common with the Coosa River where we did the Classic last year. Yeah, it's just downriver from there. It's going to have those same Alabama big spotted bass, mm -hmm. and boy, they're mean and aggressive. And uh, you know, any fisherman out there should find something that he likes there. There's going to be a lot of different techniques to, to catch these fish, and there should be a lot of fish caught. A lot of fish caught. What's the main difference between reservoir fishing and river fishing? Well, it's going to be that constant current. You know, we should have good current there, and that really turns those big spots on, and the largemouths for that matter, so we should have a great tournament. Nonstop action, we hope. Oh. Good luck to you, Kevin Van Dam. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you at the Alabama River. We'll decide the Bush Angler of the Year race, and we'll see who's going to the Classic. See you then. Got it. Got it. That's a good one, too. I don't know if he's powerful or if it's that big of force. Chicken feathers. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPNOutdoors.com.